As I'm editing this video, I realize I completely forgot to explain why I even bothered to take the unit apart. Like, what was the operational issue with it? Well, the problem was, when I would walk up, when I turn on the jukebox first thing in the morning, and I go to turn the page to, you know, pick out my favorite CD, I just hear a little buzzing as the motor only operated for like a second and then it would shut off, which is normal operation, but usually the page turns then. So basically, it was getting extremely frustrating because I'd have to go forward or backward a few pages, just a few button presses just to get the page to turn. And uh, that's the whole reason why I took it apart. On with the show. All right, here we go. This is the page unit out of the Ruckolos unit there. And it's pretty straightforward. Got some pages in it. Considering it's 30 years old, I'm quite happy because nothing's really broken in it. It just needs some maintenance. And that's kind of common with jukeboxes. If you don't use them or as they age, they need maintenance. It's not something that's supposed to run forever or run, then you throw it away. They're designed to be repaired. So as you can see, we got pages here. And um, let's flip it around and we'll see the mechanism. All right, I do not want to mess up the adjustment on this sensor here, so we're only going to remove the board. We're not going to remove it from here, at least right now. <laughs> not right now. Got to get the right... Just a couple screws hold it in, super simple. What the heck was that? Hmm, there be a net behind here. I don't know. Well, I don't think so. That's really kind of strange. Ah, there's a washer. Okay, so we had a washer on this. Here's the board here. This is the emitter detector pair. Goes right there. And basically measures when it gets to the end and we've got a series of holes here that it uses to align itself and these are the relays for the motor so this is our little control board here so far everything looks pretty good on that let's remove the motor there's only two well we got uh, let's see I think there's only we got three screws one here one here one here We'll just leave that guy hanging there. This screw is a little loose, but that's okay. Because the motor was not, was still engaging up here. Here is the motor. This really isn't that bad but we'll take it all apart and make sure it looks good Merkel Corf Industries De Plains Illinois 24 volt DC very nice all right now let's just slide this thing here oh yeah this this slides just fine so you can hear the pages That works, that works beautifully. There's nothing wrong there. So it just must be something in the motor here that's just not quite right. Let's take it all apart. Alright, what we got here is our kind of universal bit set. Looks like we got a T15 and a T20 Torx bit. These are not security Torx, but uh, T15 back here. T20 over here. I'm going to take apart these. I think these are going to be long screws that go into the motor here. What we're going to need to do is clean the brushes and the commutator on this motor, and we're also going to clean out the gearbox. Yeah, I think I'm going to be right on this one. Yep. This does have a red mark here, which shows the striped wire, so we'll just pull that off right now. I want to try to keep that end cap on till we're ready to work on it this motor should just pop off 
It's been many years since I've had it off. Okay, I was wrong about that. Okay. We'll put that back on. Because that'll pull the end cap off. Which I'm not quite ready to do yet. Okay, those screws are long. They just hold it to the end cap to the plate there. All right, let's pull off these suckers. I don't really recall if I pulled this gearbox apart or not. My screws aren't too tight, so I might have hit it off. Mm, yeah, I can't remember if I had this off or not, but yeah, here's here's part of the issue. Just sticky, dry grease, or old grease. You can see how this thing's just stuck to that gear. That's part of our problem right there. Not the ultimate problem, but it's definitely part of the problem. And the grease is, should not be between the gears like this. So we'll clean out all this old stuff. All right, here we go. So there is the screws that hold the motor to the base here. So we'll get rid of that. We've got some washers right there. Get that washer out of here. It's a little shim washer. Sorry, I didn't have it in shot there. So you clean out all that old grease. Get this motor out of here. Not doing very good. Considering the camera's right in front of my face, I should be able to tell where to, whether it's in shot or not. Okay, there we go. Doesn't really quite matter where I put this motor back on I'm not too worried about it but it might just have threaded holes in some of the portions so pretty pretty straightforward job to clean this all up I might soak it in the ultrasonic cleaner but this grease really isn't should be pretty easy to get out so leave that like that um, probably not gonna drift out the roll pin I might though I could yeah I probably will just to get that grease out of the back of the gear all right let's pull this motor apart Okay, these are the brush holders here. I'm looking at them. Make sure things are in focus here. There we go. So this brush holder will slide out and the brush spring will come up. Let's give it a little squeeze here. There we go. I'm going to cover it with my thumb. Here's our little plastic piece. Alright, there we go. So the brush is part of this tab. And there we go. Ooh, we got oil on there. That's why we're having trouble. There is oil on that brush. I can see it. Let's pull this guy off. But hey, it's 30 years old. I'm okay with that. It's good that we found something, though. Perhaps I over-oiled it, or somebody else did. Anything's possible. Now we're ready to pull this off. It's possible the springs could have gotten, or the brushes could have got damaged if we just went to pull off the cover without removing the, the brushes. I'm glad we found something though. Okay, here's the brush holder. Pretty straightforward, nothing special about it. Got a sh I don't know if we got a shim washer or not. Yeah, there's a washer right there. Yeah, oh, that commutator is wet. Wow. Yeah, check it out. That is wet. All right. Since we have access to everything, we'll just pull the whole thing right out. There's not a there's not a gear on there. It's just threaded portion. It's got good strong magnets in it. Ugh, there we go. How many segments is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Well, nice eight rotor. So very smooth operation. Well, I'm really glad we found something. There is a shim right down in there. We don't want to get that loose or lose it. So we'll just set this upright down over there. 
All right, um, yeah, let's get this gear out of the way. There is no shim on the back of this gear. This gear just sits down in here like that. So, multiple issues, but bound to happen with age. All right, let me get, and I'll show you the roll pin punch. It's a special punch to make removing roll pins much easier. Okay, this is the set I picked up at local farm and home type store. Pull this out so you can see what it says. Five piece roll pin set. What makes this special is these pin, these punches have a little dimple on the end. You don't want to dry <laughs> use these for just a you know, punch something out. Um, but it's meant to center itself on the roll pin. And I've got an extra small one over here. This is just a standard punch that I keep in there. Standard punch has just a flat end. But this guy just has a little bit of a little bit of a stud on the end. Very tiny in the center. And what that allows you to do, like with this guy, this would be perfect for this guy. This allows you to set it in here and punch it straight out. See, this is why I wear gloves. There's <laughs> lots of grease over here. All right, let me get something to uh, support this, and I'll punch it, get that roll pin out, so we can get that gear off and clean it properly the first time. We'll use something like this, a little wood block. Is that tall enough? That way we're not going to damage the gear. Yes, that is tall enough. Okay. So we'll just, this is the hammer I'm going to use. My friend Dan laughed at me when I showed him this hammer. He says, ah, it's a toy. It's like, well, this is where you use it. Now, I don't necessarily want to drive the pin all the way out. I want to drive it out enough so I can remove the gear but still leave the pin in. It doesn't, it's not the end of the world if the pin comes all the way out, but I don't need to have it all the way out. So I'm going to, as we're getting close to the end here, I'm going to tap a little lighter. There we go. Felt it going really easy there. We'll see if that was enough. Nope, a little more. Well, just came out, which is okay. Not a problem. All right. Here's our roll pin. Let's see if we can... There we go. That's off. There's no washer there. And because we used the special punch, we didn't damage this at all. Uh, so that shaft slid right out without being marred up or anything, which is beautiful. And we got everything ready to go. I'll just wipe this all down and uh, clean out all that old grease. And what we're going to use is a little bit of this stuff. Not going to use much of it. We're not going to use that much. But we'll use enough. Then we'll clean everything up. Okay, so I got everything cleaned up. I soaked it in isopropyl alcohol, which probably wasn't the best, most effective use, but uh, everything turned out good. This piece is a little discolored, but that's <laughs> no problem. Uh, everything's all cleaned. I hit it with the toothbrush here, so we are good to go. We are ready for reassembly. These pieces have been wiped clean, and they're plenty good. I'm also going to be using some of this uh, super lube. Sorry, it's going to swamp out the camera here. Actually, let me lock my exposure in. There we go. So, uh, yeah, got some super lube here. This is the lighter stuff. This will be used on the, the shaft here on the bearings. The heavier stuff will be used in the gears. And we also got the motor to figure out here. So, well, I could reassemble this right away. I think I need to reassemble the motor first. So... Let's um let's try a little bit of scotch bright here. Yeah, that's looking better already. Just gotta be gentle with it. Oh, well, that's looking really good. Matter of fact, I think that's perfect. 
all of the uh, slots here are in good condition, so this is not really a heavily used motor. <laughs> it only gets used for a few seconds at a time. Get that off of there. Uh, let's see here. Here's the brushes. We don't want to change the profile of this brush. We just want to clean up the surface just a little bit. I soaked these two, but didn't do much to them. That works. That looks really nice. All right, let's get the motor back together. Let's see, I'm going to put... Hmm, I could use this on the motor. I guess we will. We'll just, it'll be a good experiment. Okay, so we'll put a little bit of lube on the bearing surface right there. And this stuff we use sparingly. Still got a washer on the inside there. Make sure it didn't dislodge itself. And powerful magnets here, so we just got to get this centered. Hopefully. We're still looking all right. Okay, shaft is through. We just gotta install the tailpiece. Got that washer here. And I will put a tiny, tiny amount of this stuff right in here. Call that good. That should do it for us. We've got a notch here. Which coincides with the notch right here. Alright, excellent. There you go, give it a couple spins and get the bushings aligned back up. I think that's pretty good. Probably have a little bit extra end play than what I would like, but I don't have any washers the correct size and it's quite all right. All right, let's get these guys installed again. Hold the motor back together. We don't want super tight, just good and snug. All right. Doesn't really matter which brush goes in which spot, as long as the orientation of the brush, it's kind of concave from running on the, running on the armature there. So we want to make sure we get it in the correct orientation. We don't want to put any kind of lubrication on it. Otherwise, we'll have another problem. Let's see here. Must have been like this. There's one. Okay, both are in. That looks correct. I kind of wish it would. Just kind of tap on the shaft a little bit, just kind of line up the bushing there. Cause this should there. That's that's already spinning a lot easier because these bushings are kind of in a spherical joint, so it can go multiple ways. Well, we'll tap on this just lightly.
That's working a lot better. Okay, I don't have a 24 volt power supply easily available. Obviously, there's one in the jukebox, but. Okay, let's assemble these guys. Okay, let's assemble this half first. Let's see. Okay, just from the wear mark on here, I can see that this smaller ring was riding here the whole time, which is fine. This washer was riding on the inside of it, so let me put a little bit of light lubricant on this surface. Just a tiny amount. It's not galled, but you can tell where it's been riding in here, so... Put a little bit extra lubrication on that. I suppose I should have... Only did a tiny amount because that's going to, putting that washer on is going to affect it. Okay. Actually, we'll assemble it a little bit backwards just to get the lubrication on this side of it. Beautiful. Then we got this piece to go in. There was no washer on this side. All right, so now we need to basically put in a rope in and hammer it home. This is not tapered per se, at least one side is not. So I'll probably hold it with the pliers and so we don't mash the end of it, we'll use our punch again, pin punch. So I don't mash my fingers. We'll try to hold it, or we'll do something. I'm not sure what I'll do. Maybe we'll try this. I don't have three hands. Sometimes it's easier, or it's harder than it looks, I should say. Let's try that. That ought to work. going in quite nicely. All right. Everything's still aligned here. We can even put our punch in there. There we go. Just align everything really nice. Almost there. That's good. Still working good. All right. Suppose I could have hammered that gear on last. That might have been the best option, but oh well. Now we have to have fun. That probably, probably would have been the best idea, but hey, it's okay. We'll make it work. Because this guy has to slip under it. And then the cover has to go on, but it's not the end of the world. We'll make it work. All right, so this guy turns nice and freely. This guy goes under here like that. Put some lubrication right on the shaft here. Assemble it upside down on purpose. We'll just do a dry assembly just to make sure it works. There we go. Beautiful, that works really good. We'll put some of this lubrication on here as well. Make sure we get some on the other side of the bearing here. That is really good. And we'll put on this washer. Uh, 
Okay, we are ready for the motor to be put on this side. Okay, now, if we look at the motor, we can see where it was sitting before. So that's what I'll use for my marks. I think it was something like that now. Tighten it up good, we don't want it falling off. Wish the motor was a little freer. I'm sure one of them bushings is binding up a tiny bit, but oh well. Now, time for a little bit of this stuff. Super lube, multi-purpose synthetic grease. We don't need much. So we'll put some on the gear here. I said we don't need a lot. We'll put a little bit on this guy too. It'll work its way. To, it'll work its way around. We don't. We don't need as much as was in there before. That's probably too much. I don't want the grease to be sliding between the gears. Ideally. Okay. We'll keep the top surface clean here. That looks pretty good. A little bit more here. And we'll assemble it and see how it works. Of course, now with everything lubricated, it likes to slip around. Okay, I think we got it all. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Alright, I'm rotating the motor. And everything's working good here. Alright, excellent. Put the cap back on this guy. Put these screws in, tighten them up. Should be good to go for a long time. Okay, let's get the uh, bench cleaned up and get this motor back installed. Now the fun part, getting it back in. All right, well, I got the uh, harness in. That was pretty easy. Stripe wire goes to the red or stripe wire goes to the red dot there. Pretty straightforward. This thing just kind of sits back in here, and we have to line it up. I'm not putting any lubricant on here and here because it really doesn't need any. It's a plastic fitted piece, so not that big a deal. I would say just a little bit of upward pressure. You don't want too much pressure on it, but you also don't want it to skip out of it. So maybe put it tight and move it down a little bit just so there's a little bit of play in it. That's probably a little too much. Let's try that. I'd say that would work pretty good. Engaging fully in the gear. A little tighten. Yeah, I would think we would have some more screws, to be perfectly honest with you. Maybe I'll find some in my stash and get another one in there. Because I can see that this hole is threaded. But I don't think there was a screw in there when I pulled it apart. I want the motor up a little higher. A 
I'll check the uh, play at each end of its travel as well. Okay, tighten that up good. There we go. Put on that other bracket. This guy. And now, uh, meet you back at the jukebox. Okay, luckily we got that chain that holds everything in. Just gotta hook up the electrical connections, and I've got my strip light on the inside here that I gotta hook up. Okay, I'm gonna press that button up there, and we'll see if the page motor works. Okay, it is it, <laughs> it is way too tight right now. Okay, so it was mainly tight because I had it pulled down, and it's not meant to operate in that position. So I'll move the boulder back, flip the, flip the unit back, and then we'll try it. Okay, now let's give it another shot. That is working really nice. Okay. Now I just gotta figure out what's <laughs> which ones these go in. Okay, well actually that's not too bad. Alright. Well that was a very successful repair. I am very happy with how this works and well worth the time. And I didn't have to buy any new parts. Bonus! These things were definitely meant to be repaired and whatnot and they have good quality components so it's worth investing the time to see if you can fix something. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you check out the rest of our channel. And I also wanted to thank Scott Denisi for letting us use his music in some of our productions. Please check out scottdenisi.com if you want to check out more.